All right, enough gushing. Come with me, uh, Joshua chapter five. I've got three points, so let me throw these points out. If you musicians take a little bit of a break, in fact, Keys, can you stay up there? Because you're just so wonderful up there. You're doing such a beautiful job. You're so amazing. Um, stay there, don't go far. Uh, I'm gonna give you the three points first, okay? I don't know, because I, I wanna pray. I wanna pray for all, all three of these tonight so that everybody here tonight doesn't just hear a word, but there's an impartation. I feel like life is too short and, you know, with all the campuses, I don't wanna just kind of just preach a, preach a word. And, and Dr. Matt's right, like I, I don't wanna re-preach what I preached at, at um, Eastlake on Sunday, even though it was an awesome message. Um, and I don't wanna re-preach what I preached last week at Balboa even though it's a great message and it's worth listening to on the app or on, on our YouTube channel. But the title of my message tonight is Instructions for Taking Territory. And as, as I was kind of praying around tonight, I, I never take it as a light thing to be at our largest campus. I never take it as a, as a light thing to get on any of our platforms. In fact, it, it doesn't matter whether I'm at our uh, smaller campus, it doesn't matter. That to be on the platform, I see that we have an assignment to shift a city. So I never want to take a light. I never want to waste 20 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, one minute of just. And so I, I asked the Lord, I said, you know, what's, what's, what's a word? And the Holy Spirit brought this passage and it's really interesting because I just preached on this a few weeks ago. Somewhere, I can't remember where, somewhere. May, may have even been here, but anyway, but we're gonna, it's like the second half. So Joshua has just crossed the Jordan. They're in Gilgal, and I think it was here. I preached tears to a glass eye, painful was the circumcision message, painful. Well, that's happened. Now they're all healed. So come with me, Joshua 5. So this is, well, it's great that it's here. Oh, now it all makes sense. Okay, so it's a continuum. All right. Joshua 5.13 says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. So Joshua is now at Jericho and he looks across the way and there's a man standing opposite him with a sword drawn. Sword drawn means he's, he's, he's ready to go to war. He's ready to throw down. He's ready to engage. He's ready to do battle. He's ready to fight. And the Bible says, And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? I like that because that's quite a courageous thing. When you see a guy with a sword, Joshua's like, Hey, I've got to take, um, Jericho is on God's hit list. And you're standing in between me and Jericho. I want to know, am I, am I going to have to fight you first? Am I going to take you down before I take? Or are you, are you waiting? Are you a help? And I love what the, the angel of the Lord says. He says, no. It's kind of a really weird way to answer the question. He's like, hang on, are you for us or for our adversaries? No. Yeah, I'm not sure if you heard me correctly. He said, no. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the army of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Verse chapter six, verse one, now Jericho was securely shut up. There was no chapters and verses in the Bible. This is a, a flow on, this is a continuum. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I've given Jericho into your hand, its king 
and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all ye men of war shall go around the city once. This shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. And on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, take up the Ark of the Covenant. Let's, and he gives instruction. He gives instruction. And I love the story. The story finishes them, finishes with them marching the city, the, the ram's horn, and then they shout and the walls came down. It's amazing what, what happens under the shout of God's people. We're, we're, there's a lot of people, they don't have a shout because they don't know what God has given them. But when you know that what God has given you, something rises on the, you just can't stay silent. I, we can't stay, I wish y'all would just stay silent. Why do you have to get, because I just can't stay, because I know what God has, I know the picture that God has for San Diego and this ain't it. I know the picture that God has for, for California. And let me tell you, New Salini, he ain't it. This ain't it. I know what God's vision is for your life. I know what God's vision is for your house, for your marriage, for your family, for our children, for the for, for the actual struggle of the homeless and, and being in encampments with the government taking federal hands out that never gets to them. That ain't it. And so I'm telling you, we cannot be silent because when you know what God has given you, there's a shout that rises up on the inside of you. And I'm telling you, it's a holy shout. It's a godly shout. It's a righteous shout. It's an anointing shout. It's a shout that terrifies terrifies the devil because it's a shout that brings the walls of Jericho down. Can somebody say amen? So let me tell you, if the devil is packing in his boots now, he ain't seen nothing yet. Because there's going to be some shouting in 2022. Lorena Gonzalez resigned yesterday. There's a shout because we're going to feel that. There's an election this year. We're going to be shouting. We're going to be so shouting that the walls of voter fraud and the, all the walls, the walls of their cheating and their lie is going to come down. The walls of wickedness is coming down. The walls of injustice is coming down. The walls of murder and exploitation is coming down. The walls of child trafficking, human trafficking, sex slavery is coming down, is coming down. We are not the church that it coexists with evil and we never get engaged. Oh, oh no, we don't ever shout because we don't want to lose our 501c3, do we, Pastor? Oh, oh, God forbid that we should shout. We may endanger our fight. You know what? Take my 501c3. I'd rather have a shout that brings down walls than have a tax exemption status. Come on, let's just give God a shout right now. Come on. Oh! Hallelujah. Well, none of that is in my notes, so I apologize. None of that is in my notes. That's all Holy Ghost. So, all right, three quick thoughts. Three quick thoughts, because I have to pray. I have to pray. Jamie and Mitra, I'm blaming this on you. All right, number one, number one, choose to be on God's side. Joshua says, are you for us or for our enemies? And he says, no, but as commander of the Lord's armies. Abraham Lincoln was once asked, do you think God is on our side in this battle? And Abraham Lincoln, and now I would have probably thought, yeah, yeah, fighting for freedom, fighting for the emancipation of, of our, I'd be, I'd be like, yeah, God is pro setting the slaves, setting the captives free. I would have said, but Abraham Lincoln, very godly man, turned and said, sir, I'm not so asking whether God is on our side, but rather I'm asking, am I on God's side? Because God is always right. God is always right. In 2022, make a decision. Today I'm gonna to be on God's side. I wanna be on the Lord's side. You may have been raised and, and it's, it's
He does have a political party. God doesn't work through a political party. God works through courage. He works through righteousness. He works through virtue. He works through people. So Joshua says, are you on our side? And he's like, I'm commander of the Lord's army. And then Joshua falls on his face and he realized this year, the greatest thing that you can do is align your life with him. Align your life with the Almighty. I, I love this. I love this because Joshua is seeing what's happening in the spirit realm. When we, when we came to, to San Diego, it was so beautiful. I'm reading in my Bible and I'm reading in the book of Revelation. There are seven letters to seven churches. And it's really interesting because it, it introduces Jesus as walking amongst the seven golden lampstands. And then it says that the seven golden lampstands, Pastor Mike, is the seven churches. And then it shows Jesus and the Bible says in his right hand are the seven stars. And John says, what are the seven stars? He says, the seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches. And then each letter is like, each letter is written to the angel of the church of Laodicea, right? To the angel of the church in Smyrna, right? To the angel of the church of Thyatira, right? And when God said to me, God said to me, when you were willing to go to San Diego, you didn't go by yourself. He says, not only is my, my presence with you, but there's a, a commander of angel armies. I'm not smart enough. Are you kidding this building? Are you kidding me? I'm not that smart. I get a phone call from Dr. Matt. Dude, I found the building. It's going to be our next campus. I drive in. It had sold in 2004 for 14 million. We just spent 10 million on an East campus. We got nothing left in the bank. I'm like, God, we got nothing left in the bank. But God's like, good, because now we're back to where we started this thing. Just you and me, and you didn't have to have money in the bank. You didn't have to have all your ducks lined in a row. You didn't have to have, remember it was just us. When the commander of the Lord's armies, when you have no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When the pandemic hit, we knew I sought the Lord. I wasn't reckless. We sought the Lord. He says, not one will be lost. Not one will be lost. I'm telling you, there are forces greater than Pelosi. They, they, they have no idea who they're messing with. They have no idea who they're messing with. Elisha says to his servant, when his servant sees a whole army, the Syrian army, with the general and all the chariots. He runs in and says, oh my God, we're doomed, oh, it's, it's over. And he says, no, more are with us than with them. And he's like, no, no, there's just two of us. And he's like, Lord, open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he saw the host of heaven, saw the host of heaven. The Bible says, and there were chariots, with fire, angels with flaming swords all around Elisha. I say that to all, to, to say this, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Whenever you see the angels, the angels look into the earth from heaven and they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The earth is filled with the glory of God. We see chaos, but they see, they see the glory of God. From the first week of January, from the very first day, make the decision. I'm on your side, God. Instead of trying to invoke him onto my side, I want to be on his side. I had some plans, I had some goals, I had some dreams, but I bring them every year. And I bring them and say, Lord, this is what I feel like you put into my heart, but I don't want to try to get you to be on my side. I want to make sure that I'm always on your side. One, one, of the, one of the great lies of the devil is you'll, you'll hear it in Disney. The devil knows he can't stop. He can't hide the fact that if you dream it, you can achieve it. He can't hide the fact that you were created to operate in vision, that you were created to see the impossible, that you were created to dreamscape your future. 
So he hijacks, he removes God from the equation. So Disney will put out things, uh, Pastor Alex, like, don't let anything stand in between you and your dreams. Go for your dreams. Don't let anything stand in the way. But I found that you can spend a whole lot of time chasing a dream, asking God to bless a dream, only to find when you get to that dream, it wasn't a dream, it was a nightmare. But I found the greatest thing that can happen when I read my Bible, Joseph dreamed the dreams of God. Jacob dreamed the dreams of God. Abraham had the dreams of God. Joseph had the dreams of God. Mary had the dreams of God. You wanna dream the dreams of God? This is a house of dreams. But the greatest dream you can dream is the dream that God has for your life. So often we're trying to get God to bless. God bless my dream. But I'm telling you every year, like God, what is your dream? What's your dream for my marriage? What's your dream for my family? What's your dream for my home? What's your dream? And I gotta tell you, I've never once outdreamed God. When I said, God, you know, what's your dream for, you know, for my marriage? I'm like, oh, I couldn't, that could never happen. How could Leanne stuck with me? How could that? Where do you, he's, a, he's an upgrade God. He does exceedingly abundantly above. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to, to dream the dreams of God. Choose to be on God's side. The second one is remove your sandals. First thing, first thing Joshua did when the angel said no, but as commander of the armies of, the, of heaven, the armies of the Lord, I've come. Joshua falls on his face and the angel says to him, take the sandals, take, take the stuff you've been walking in that's wore out. It's got, it's got the groove marks of old trails, old treks, old mindsets, old destinations, old limitations, old... They're the same shoes you walked in for the last 40 years, 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years of not crossing the Jordan, 40 years of hopeless, 40 years of dealing with all the other people's negative. You take those things off. Take the, take the limitations off. Don't, don't, don't cross into 2022. Still walking in the same mindsets, walking in the same broken friendships and relationships. Now I'm not saying don't befriend them. I'm not saying don't reach out to them. Don't not invite them to hear on. Don't not invite them to church. But it's a new day. I had a revelation many years ago, Pastor Samuel, when God said to Moses, take the sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. And we were living in New Zealand. In New Zealand, the Maori culture, the, the indigenous people culture, is when you walk onto their holy site, which is called a marae, out of respect, you take your shoes off. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with me. And He said, and this may not be the reason, but it was like one of the reasons I felt that He said to Moses, take the sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. It's like, take, kick, kick your shoes off. Kick them off and let, let your feet feel holiness. Take the sandals off your feet and just immerse your feet. Because the sandals, it's rubber. There's things you can't feel, but when you're in bare feet, it's like, feel that holiness. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. I gotta be really honest with you. I I was grew up in a in an atheist home where I was told there was no God, so I lived like there was no God. If there was a sin going around, I was gonna give it a shot. <laughs> but I don't know if there's if there's any sin that com that compares with walking clean before a holy God. The blessing of God on holiness, on righteousness. Point two is just remove the sandals. The things that used to give me a thrill, the things that used to give me, they lose their luster. When you kick the sandals off your feet, 
because you're standing on holy ground. The more you stand on the ground, the more you want God. I got one wife, four kids. One wife, four kids. My kids look at me. My second son, Ash, tells me probably every other text, Dad, you're my hero. Little eyes are watching. I, holiness, I want to love that one woman faithfully, treat her like a princess for the rest of my life. I want her to feel like the greatest day outside of her salvation was the day that God brought us together. I'm telling you the rewards of holiness, the rewards of righteousness, kick the sandals off your feet. Get rid of the old things. Get rid of the old. And the third one, the last one, the last one. I promise I'm going to pray. How beautiful is this young lady playing on the keys? And I wasn't expecting her to take my shoes off. So you see people falling out under the power. It may be, it may not be the power of God at all. What, just because I've had these socks on for a week? I can't, Rachel, if you're so judged, why would you? All right, number three, last one. <clears throat> I love it. The Lord says to him, so this commander now says to Joshua in Joshua 6 verse 2, he says, See, I have given you Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Joshua was looking at impossible. Joshua was looking at impregnable. He was looking at a compound. He was looking at fortified, well-engineered, it was, Bible scholars say, it was the crown of human engineering in those days. It, it, it looked like you should just go around it and God says, you're the leader, son. Now that you've seen me, I want you to see that I've given Jericho into your hand, but that's not all, and it's king. I don't want you to just see the walls coming down, but I want you to see the king not seated on his throne, surrounded by his, but see the king groveling before you with his crown rolling towards your feet, begging for his life. I want you to see that I've given Jericho its king and its mighty men of valor. In other words, the king and the, the authority over it and that which protects it, I'm giving you. <clears throat> I'm not just giving you the city but I'm giving you the authority over that land, the king, and I'm removing its protection. The children of Israel, the armies of the living God will now be that which executes justice and righteousness in this land. The Holy Spirit wants to fall on you and help you to see what is possible with God. So see the possible with God. See the possible with God. So that's, I'm not going to preach anymore. In fact, quick, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> that was a little bit too enthusiastic, if I was honest with you. Like, let's shut him up. <laughs> all right. Uh, in fact, all right. So let's, let's do this. If that was a word for you, choose God's side. I want you just to stand to your feet. Just to stand to your feet. Lift your hand high to heaven. I've got to choose God's side. L align yourself again. I love Sir, Sir Abraham Lincoln, Sir, my concern is not whether God is on my side, but whether I am on God's side, for God is always right. Father, I thank you right now, draw near to these magnificent sons and daughters. Father, today we choose, we choose to be on God's side. We make a decision to again, align ourselves with the almighty God. We're not asking you to bless our plans, Father. We're asking you, what is your plan? We're not asking you to bless our dreams, Father. What is your dream? We're not asking you to bless our purposes. We're asking you, God, is what, what is your purposes? We're not asking you to bless our goals. We're saying, God, what is your goals for my life? I'm not asking you, Lord God, to bless my, I'm asking you, Lord God, what kind of marriage, finances, family, home. And I, I hear right now popping, I hear popping in the spirit. Homes, 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 homes. Some of you, you've been content to rent, content to rent. But God is going to literally rent. He's going to rent asunder the, the, the you're, you're going to go in because God's will for you is to be the land Lord, is to be Lord of the land. He didn't give the land. He didn't 
create the earth for the unrighteous and for the wicked. He created for his sons and daughters. Father, I thank you. I see marriages being healed. I see families right now. There's, there's uh, some families split apart. I see the families coming together. I see God working miracles in families, miracles in families, miracles in families. The Bible says, as you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. Second one is remove your sandals. Remove your sandals. What things do you need to take off? What things do you need to remove? What things have you been walking in? What mindsets, what attitudes, what habits, what struggles, what issues, what judgments, what sins, what anger? I, I knew somebody, Dr. Matt, for, for 11 years, for 11 years, they showed up to church, they drove a really nice car. They felt called by God to ministry, but no door would open, no door would open, no door would open. And for 11 years, they always had this criticism. They, they, they would do it surreptitiously, but they would just kind of criticize the pastor and criticize the church and criticize the vision. And it came from they, when they grew up, that's what they did around the table. They would criticize all the things that are wrong and all the things the pastor could do better. And this one day, the Holy Spirit says, you just, keep, you just keep circling, just knock yourself out. I am elevating you. He said, no sooner did he repent, the next Sunday, the pastor got up and said, something shifted off you. And he says, God told me you're an armor bearer years ago. But I said, Lord, I don't feel a connection. I don't feel like he's faithful. I don't feel like he's got my back. And something shifted. The guy broke down. Now he's one of the great campus pastors, oversees all the campuses. This church is literally impacting cities. But he had to take off some of the old habits. He had to take off some of the bitterness. He had to take off some of the negativity. Who's hurt you? Who's wounded you? And you're still carrying it. We're, we've crossed the Jordan. And the angel of the Lord, take, take these things off. Let holiness begin to permeate through your feet. Feel what it's like to walk holy before God. Let your mindsets, let your attitudes, let your hearts, let your... Father, we just... If, you, if you're going to let some stuff go, just lift your hand with me. Father, we let go of the old. We forsake the old. We cast those sandals off our feet. We cast them off our feet in Jesus' name. We cast them off our feet in Jesus' name. Father, we cast them off our lives. I, I break mindsets. I break paradigms. Some people here and you, you've been carrying a wound and the wound is legitimate. Somebody did hurt you. Somebody did betray you. Somebody did do you wrong. And I'm not belittling that or taking that away, but I just hear the Lord say, you don't need to walk as a victim of that thing. You don't need to walk in the pain of that thing. You don't need to walk in the memory of that thing. If you will forgive them, the Lord would say, I will deal with them. If you will forgive them, I will deal with them. But the first thing that I'll do, says the Lord, is I'll heal your heart and I'll put new shoes on your feet. Your walk will be different. Your walk will be better. Father, the last one, see what's possible with God. Come on, let's everybody lift our hands. We're out of time. Father, right now, I thank you, Lord God, that we see what's possible with God. See what's possible with God. Band, if we, if we can have you guys come. The last song that we sang, Awake My Soul, such a powerful song. I'm going to have the, have the band sing this song. I'm going to hand back to Dr. Matt and have the band sing the song, Awake My Soul. And I want you to sing it. And because when he moves, walls come down. When he moves. And I just want you to, 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 to see. Don't see the limits. Don't see the, the impossible. Don't see the walls of Jericho. Don't see the economy so difficult. Don't see, well, you know, we've got higher taxes. Well, don't see, well, you know, the gas prices in San... Don't, don't, don't see. I want you to see God has given you the city. I want you to see God has given you 
the home. I want you to see God has given you breakthrough. I want you to see God has given you restoration. I want you to see God has given you and its king authority over it and its mighty men of valor. Come on. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.